Okay. Good evening. This is the meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Newcastle. Today is November 30th, 2022. Okay. First on the agenda is uh, we have two extensions tonight. First one is Evangelos, 1111 Hearts Gravel Road. And we are looking for a six month extension. Uh, yes. Hi, members of the board. Uh, this is Brian Hopkins. I'm uh, the architect representing uh, Costas Evangelinos, um, and we are requesting an extension. Can you explain to us why the extension is necessary? Uh, the well, um, the extension is necessary because um, uh, the well, the pre I I'm the second architect on the job. The previous architect. Um, you know, uh, was was failing to perform his duties for whatever reason. Um, I don't know the extent of exactly what happened. Um, and so I was uh, retained um, to continue on with the drawing um, and produce the documentation set for, for Mr. Evangelinos. So um, we had to go through planning again um, and we're here requesting an extension. So how much of an extension do you require? Um, You're still at the drawing stage? We're still in the drawing stage. It would be nice to have another six month extension, but a three month extension would suffice. Unless anybody has an objection, you've asked for six on your on an application. I will make a motion to grant a six month extension. Sure. Do you want to make that motion? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Do you vote on it or not? <laughs> you have a problem with that? No. Was this funny games night tonight? I'll second. Okay. Uh, Chairman Kenneth Cooper. In favor. Anthony Giardino. Aye. Harvey Bonaparte. Aye. Howard Dubs. Aye. Michael Nolan. Aye. Thank you. You have your extension. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Second extension request is from Claire. Uh, Mark the place. I don't, but I don't see a time on here. Know? Excuse me, Tony. I don't want to interrupt. I just want to say for the record, uh, Mr. Harvey Bonaparte is uh, appearing virtually uh, pursuant to local law um, via Zoom today. So I just want to say that for the record. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. Do we have anything on that, Tom? About in conversations well, with Mr. Patrick Clare today, he's looking for a six month extension to get started. He just finished going through engineering submissions and now he's coming to the building department with documentation. Understood. This has been a long, a long process. He had a lot of engineering to do. I realize that. And um, it's a difficult situation to get his project going. So I'll make a motion that we grant Clare a uh, six month extension also. I'll second. Chairman Kenneth Cooper. Hi. Anthony Giardina. Hi. Harvey Bonaparte. Hi. Howard Dubs. Hi. Michael Moore. Hi. Next is Robbins. One Allison Lane. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, Brad Schwartz from Zarin Steinmetz. On behalf of um, the Robbins, the applicants, and one Allison. I'm joined tonight by the Robins. They're under, they're under my name on the Zoom. I see. So you guys just want to raise your hand and identify yourselves. Uh, you can see them on the screen. Um, also joined by Matt Jones and Rick Simmer from Tapestry Landscape Architecture, the project landscape architects and site designers. There they are on the screen over there. And Jeff Agarian, the project engineer, could not join us tonight, but I want you to know that there is a project engineer on the team. And my colleague Jacqueline Cohen is also on the screen with us. So this is an application for four area variances, three of which pertain to patios in the backyard, and the fourth variance is a development coverage variance that pertains to a new circular turnaround driveway that's proposed in the front yard. And that's a reduction from the eight variances that were previously proposed and submitted to your board last month. As I think you all may know, the project previously proposed a pool pavilion with an overhang structure that itself necessitated four variances. And the reason why it was shown in the location where it was when we submitted to your board 
is that the ERB had advised our client, keep the pavilion out of the wetland buffer, which is what <laughs> For following our application, the Robins, upon further reflection, decided the pavilion in that location really is not optimal and ideal for the site. So they decided to eliminate the pavilion from the plan, thereby eliminating those four variances, and instead proposing a new circular turnaround driveway in the front that would provide for safe maneuverability and, and turning movements for delivery vehicles. The current driveway is very narrow, and as Danny can explain, the delivery trucks truly make like 10-point turns trying to navigate the driveway. So that was a change in the plan as compared to previously submitted. There are now four area variances required, and I'll share my screen and pull up the, uh, the drawing. So first, um, the patios, and, and Matt and Rick, please feel free to jump in at, at any time during the presentation. This is the, uh, the lawn patio that necessitates a 42 foot variance. I'm sorry, are you pointing to something? Can you not see it? No. no. I'll put it's your top first screen. He has his little cursor oh, okay. showing. Yeah. This is, this is the lawn patio. Whoop, shoot. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Let me close out and start over. <clears throat> um, we could share our screen too, Brad, if that helps. Go for it while I try to get rid of these highlights. Okay. Oh, does we? Okay. Doesn't seem to be letting us. He probably has to be has to stop sharing. I did. Did he? Okay. Yeah, it's it's not allowing the share. I don't know if you have to allow that, Brad. I don't think I need. Let me see. Give me one second. I'm no longer sharing, so I, sh I shouldn't have to. I'm gonna try this again. So here it is again, clean version. Can everybody now see the plan? Yes. Okay, so this is the lawn patio. Then I'll come. That's in the rear. Uh -huh. Can everyone see the cursor around the lawn patio? Yes. Yes, okay. And what variances do you require in that case? So for the lawn patio, it's a 42 foot rear yard setback variant. We're proposing 18 feet where 60 feet is required rear yard. This patio here is- I'm sorry, before you, before you move on, I'm sorry. In the case of the lawn patio, can you refresh our memories? How did you come to place the, the patio in that location? Matt, you wanna jump in here? So that was a previously unused sloped lawn area. So the purpose of that was really to have uh, people to be able to congregate up there to look over the pool area, but also to provide some accessibility to an existing play area for the children on the left side of the house. There's a, re there's a retaining wall and steps that take you from the back of the house up to this call it the upper left side yard. And um, just trying to bring some sort of amenity to a area that was not conducive to any activities, but did um, only act as a, 
a waypoint to get to the play set over there on the left side of the house. And you, you couldn't bring it closer to the dwelling? Um, there's an existing retaining wall. And if you look at the landscape plan, this is this area is encompassed with landscaping also. So it's not just a retaining wall, a bluestone border, and a patch of lawn. There's um, a full composition up there with landscaping. So I was leaving some room in order to allow some landscaping to surround the area. So I'm sorry, did I understand? Did, does that circular retaining wall, does that exist today? The wall that is patched with those little circles is proposed, but the, the light gray wall that you see and the light gray steps that lead up to our proposed lawn patio are existing. So currently, if you go up those existing stairs, it's a sloped lawn, and then there's some um, mature plantings along the property line. And it's just providing no function for the homeowner. Okay, let's keep going. And, and here's the rear yard setback line, this dash line right here. So the next patio, moving over, and, and Matt, I'm happy to stay with the landscape thing. I think that's best. Yeah. Um, this is the blue stone patio that necessitates a 13 foot rear yard setback variance. So currently, there's a there's a patio that's in need of a renovation, and that's what that 49 foot four inch dimension is to. <clears throat> What I did was when we go to hopefully renovate this patio area, I centered this hatched area that shows some couches on the home's interior living room. So we ended up meeting about a 24 inch difference to get it centered on the house. If I zoom out, that might better show that. But there is patio in the in mostly in this area already. And then the third patio is this pool patio over here, which necessitates a 14 foot side yard setback. It's a, it's a small expansion of the existing pool patio. Yeah, so this was added because the best sun exposure for some chase lounges around the pool is in this spot. This is in the southwestern quadrant. And um, we also, a big part of this renovation of the yard was to bring some level lawn areas in proximity to the house because the nature of this property is it slopes from the house down to the woodland. So most of the side yard and front yard isn't conducive to just like kicking a ball around. So we wanted to add a few more pockets of lawn around these existing improvements, like the patio and the pool so that the family could um, enjoy them. So the patio we're adding off the back of the pool there, it's pretty modest for four chairs and then about a balanced a lawn panel behind it for overflow. You see the landscaping around all three patios. They're all obviously horizontal, you know, site improvements. So, you know, there shouldn't be any adverse impacts to surrounding properties. I still There's don't also quite. Well, I still don't understand the need for the lawn patio. It seems to me that's an extraneous uh, item that we could get away with not having and, and get, uh, then you'd be requesting, be, be requesting much less of a variance. And our job is to try to give you the most, the minimum variance possible. So you have to convince me that that's necessary. 
Um, we can discuss that. Can, can, yeah. Uh, can I? Can I? Yeah. Can I chime in for a moment? It's uh, Danny Robbins, the uh, homeowner. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. So uh, I'm obviously no expert and I would be completely deferential to the board with respect to their knowledge and expertise on, on some of these matters. What I can speak to is just the family who lives there. One of the challenges with our property is if you look, you know, bird's eye view, I think we have two and a quarter acres. And um, the reality is, is the way that the acreage is set up and the way that the house was built, because it's a little bit funky. I think that the house itself originally was like a carriage house for the adjacent house. And then there was a big addition put on in maybe 2005, 2006 that used the original foundation and then built it uh, in addition to that, right? And so our whole backyard right now is basically this very smushed area. And if you look at this, you know, this drawing on the thing, it's already basically every usable part of our backyard by definition requires a variance. Even the existing patio as it stands look like they must have gotten a variance back then. So every little tiny thing we're trying to do is like smushed into this one little section in our backyard. The goal, at least as it relates to that fireplace, we don't want to do something and maybe we can get around with making it less patio. But the idea was, is we have this other section because our property is so sloped the previous owners already built this big retention wall and these stairs. At the moment, it almost feels like these stairs lead to nothing. You walk up these stairs and there's just empty grass. <clears throat> so what we're trying to accomplish is a nice kind of artistic, you know, architectural technique to tie that random part of the property that we're all staring at into the rest of the yard. And so the, the architect had come up with this, the suggestion of making it a fire pit. So that's all we're trying to accomplish. If we can still build a fire pit there and do it in a way that is like slightly less of a uh, variance request, that might be helpful, but that's the objective. And, you know, I think we're just trying to find a way to connect that weird part of the yard to the rest of the house, if that makes sense. And again, and just to, Danny, thank you. Just to emphasize that, here's the wetland buffer line. All right, so right off the bat, this part of the backyard is, you know, is essentially off limits. So when you then factor in the shape of the property, setback lines, that's why Danny's saying this is the area of the backyard that's most usable. <clears throat> well, if you say you need it, you need it. But I, for me, I don't. I don't see the necessity of it, but it's a, just my opinion. Yeah. yeah there, there would be no adverse impacts associated with the patio. It would be properly screened and we engineer. We would be installing seepage pits that would be, you know, post post approval before building permit to make sure that all stormwater is handled from all patios. Well, this one's a lawn patio, but again, there'd be no adverse impact resulting from any of these improvements. Could, could tapestry explain the the screening plan to us? The uh, it's a little hard to read. Um, so currently, in this whole backyard, we have some our patio areas are in the flatter locations, and then there's a pretty extreme slope. Once we get past the existing wall up to the property lines, and it's all wooded up there, and then the neighbors even beyond go higher in elevation. There's mature trees that are going to remain. There was a handful of spruces proposed up in the corner that was to just plug one hole that was left from uh, just not having the, the old vegetation in place. A lot of the landscaping that's proposed is mostly ornamental to just to give like definition to each of the proposed areas. But as far as the need for evergreen screening or anything like that, there are no open holes other than where I have those three spruces up in the corner. That was the one spot that didn't have a really dense natural buffer. And then as you go down the yard, there's a huge swath of woodland where the brook is and it would be almost impossible to um, plant new plants in those areas because it's so dense already.
Okay, we've heard about patios. What else? For Matt, let's shift to the driveway. Yeah, so the driveway currently, it, uh, it's like a straight shot off the road, and then it brings you to a, a, a I guess you'll say a turnaround from the driveways, which are undersized. So the far left garage bay has 26 feet to get out. The other garage bay has 32 feet, where 35 is standard. So it's a very awkward driveway to get in and out just for daily use by the Robinses. So what we wanted to do was relocate the stem of the driveway towards the front door, provide a circular court so that the delivery people can come in and out easily, guests can come in and out, drop off for kids and things. And then for the daily use, the existing driveway over by the garage doors would be left for the homeowners and it wouldn't be so encumbered by other traffic that might come in and out of the house. It does necessitate a small retaining wall. And then off of this new motor court is the pathway to get to the backyard. Because currently there's a tall retaining wall on the left side of the house that blocks all access for pedestrians to get into the backyard. So that's why the walkway system along the right side of the house leading to the pool area was proposed just for um, people don't have to go through the house to get to the backyard. And so this would result in a development coverage variance of 1,552 square feet, or 11%. And again, the engineer would install necessary stormwater facilities to handle the runoff from the increased impervious surface. I never got it. Did you get the revisions? Uh, I missed them if I got. They were circulated, I think, earlier this week or last week. Um, with with this um, turnaround, the additional coverage. So the original variance was obviously they got rid of some variances, the side yard, rear yard, whatever the case is. But the coverage has also increased. The coverage variance they were seeking originally. I'm not sure what the number was. Eight percent. Right? Yeah, it was eight percent. Now it's eleven percent. Yeah, originally the the proposed additional development was 1,058 square feet of additional coverage, and now it's 1,552. So it's right. about... Um, right. Which translates from an 8% to 11%. And, and does this all have to do with the circular driveway? The, the increase part? from the last set of drawings, we had an informal call with uh, the town, and we actually took out a little patio around the pool but then we ended up putting the driveway circuit, the circular driveway in. The circular driveway was always part of an initial concept design for the homeowners. And um, once the pavilion was fully removed from the project, they decided we wanted to allocate the budget to a more functional driveway. So that's why we added that back in. And so the net is this increase of 3% in terms of the development coverage? Yeah, there is some overlap from the existing driveway to the proposed. Like we're, we're removing about 30 feet of stem and it's getting pulled towards the front door. So I think the net increase, if we look at the hardscape plan in my lot coverage tab, you'll see uh, the existing lot coverage on the old driveway versus the new driveway. Mm -hmm. 
my own. existing driveway is 3,576 square feet. The proposed driveway with the circle is 4,437 square feet. And there'd be no way for the design to come closer to the original. There's a retaining wall along the left side of the existing driveway with three magnolias that we really want to keep. There's also an issue when people come to the house, they always go to the mudroom door, which is like towards the middle of the house and really trying to get people out of that area and bring them to the front door. So by rerouting the main stem of the driveway towards the front door, we're hoping that'll eliminate people getting into the, the mudroom area. But I come back to there's no way, there's nothing that you can remove so that we can keep the development coverage at that original request. I did talk to the homeowners and if we go to the backyard, that bluestone hatched patio in the center, there's currently a lawn to the left of that. And if that was removed and returned to lawn, we would gain another flat lawn panel right in the back of the house. And they were open to doing that too because they'd give up the patio, which was about 400 square feet, but they would gain the lawn back, which was key from the start. Flat lawn, because there's just so much slope lawn everywhere. So, so that would bring you back to that original request amount? I don't think it'll be full, but it would bring it down by about half. So maybe we'll go from eight to like nine and a half percent. Brad, I, I, you'd have to look at the percentages. Yeah, I mean, the bump up was about 500 square feet. So this is a, that's a 400 square foot give back, it sounds. Okay, so yeah, we're very close. So it, it, is the homeowner on board with making that adjustment? Uh, yeah, look, I mean, I am trying to be thoughtful and reasonable and I am fully appreciative that sacrifices and compromises have to be made. I will say from, from my own perspective, we were pretty focused on creating this pool pavilion in the first place, which the town rejected, or at least the ERB did. So that was a pretty big setback. And we've gone back to the drawing board to try to be flexible and amenable. I'm not particularly thrilled about losing that patio behind my house. As I think you can now see, my point is, is of actual functional yard, even though I have two and a quarter acres, there's just not that much backyard. And so that patio space functionally was very helpful for me. That's where I put a couch and lounge chairs and I have people sit. So I guess I'll, I mean, look, if I have to sacrifice something to me, that's what I would sacrifice, but I wouldn't be thrilled about it, but I can, I want to also be reasonable here. Tom, what's your assessment of the application and well, what should be also pointed out is that there is a wetlands permit that needs to be granted for anything in the buffer area to go forward and that's still pending with the environmental review board. So whenever the board decides, we still need, you know, authorization from that board as well. Uh, it's yeah. there are avenues to remove coverage, walkways, stairs that could result in a give back even slenderizing things. Some of the walkways are four and five feet in width. If they were reduced to a lesser width by linear coverage, you might get back the numbers you need. But I, I would also submit, right, keep in mind under the balancing test, like what's the environmental benefit of bringing it back down to the 8% that was originally proposed? I, I certainly get why the zone board might want to accomplish that. But the benefits of the homeowner to have that patio space for the outdoor lounging and recreational area, and the engineer could design the stormwater to whether it's 8% or 11%, as we would submit that the balance and test still weighs in favor of granting the variances. It's, it's still at 11%, not very substantial, not going to cause adverse impacts to the community or the neighbors. And again, stormwater can be ad adequately mitigated. Uh, I, I would just say that in terms of development coverage, we probably have three or four, five applications a year dealing with development coverage. So 
I understand what you've just said, but um, uh, it's not something that this board deals with often, and um, and there is a difference between eight and eleven percent. Respectfully, I say that. I mean, if there are other concepts, ideas, or suggestions that any of the design team has, um, the board's happy to hear what those are. Um, and, and we understand that there are limitations in terms of the site and what can be accomplished. Yeah, we would have to really talk to the to the homeowners before making any further decisions. We just knew that that rectangle in the back was one spot because it also allowed them to double the existing lawn behind the house. The, the proposed motor court isn't oversized. It's actually slightly undersized just because it wasn't fully necessary to have an entire radius. Like the trucks will still have to do a little two point turn, but they won't have to put, do a 10 point turn anymore. And um, for the most part, the pathways are four feet. I find like a three foot pathway is just not enough. You can't even like walk side by side on a three foot pathway. But if if we spoke to the homeowners, the, the, the right side pathway could be another area to try to cut back on coverage. I just put this out for consideration. It seems that the board is not really in favor of this. Sorry, I'm not speaking for anybody particularly, but I, the, the sense I'm getting here is there's a little bit of a conflict of, of uh, whether whether it's we're in favor or not. And I know I did not get the revised uh, application that was that we just found out tonight was sent out. And I don't think every member of the board got that revised application either. My suggestion would be to go back to your client, do the best you can to reduce whatever you can reduce, give us a more clear uh, understanding of what the final application would be. Come back to us for consideration and we should take a vote on it. I, I would be hesitant to take a vote tonight because I don't want to see you denied in, uh, for uh, an application that can be worked around and, and can be approved in the, in the, uh, in the future. Um, and I'm only speaking for myself. I don't know how the rest of the board members feel, but uh, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, unsure of what we're doing because of so many changes. And, and uh, sorry to interrupt, with that being said, it might even make sense if, if you guys would suggest um, there are obviously some wetland issues here. It might make sense to go to the ERB and see how they feel about coverage, how they feel about some of these issues, and then have the applicant come back here uh, if there's any mitigation measures in terms of wetlands that are considered, right? Because that is an additional issue given the, the wetland buffer being so far into the property. So. In terms of process, would we generally be granting the variances and then it would go to ERB and then if, if there were issues it would be returned to well, you you could board uh, you could do it conditionally of course or or I think you know going to the ERB first and then seeing what they have to say almost getting like their second opinion let's say and then coming back it, it also depends how the dates line up right but maybe the dates line up where they get the ERB comments and they say okay we've reduced coverage they come back here and maybe obviously conditioned on ERB approval still, but you have a better picture and maybe some of these concerns uh, go away at that point. It might be better all around to do that. Yeah. It, it do, does this does this particular committee meet again in December or do they not have a December meeting given the seasonality and the holidays? We do, we do meet December. Okay, because I think we're supposed to be going in front of the ERB on, on December 19th, so from a timing perspective, it may make sense to do that and then come back in front of the zoning board with, you know, we can sharpen our pencils and, and make some tweaks on the margin to try to be accommodative um, regarding some of your concerns. I, I will just reiterate, I mean, you know, being a resident in Newcastle, um, to me, I, I, and you, the town has been wonderful. I will, you know, I want to tip my hat to you guys. You've been very accommodating every time you've had questions, Tom and Dennis and a lot of the folks have really been responsive. And so we appreciate that. I know that we originally submitted our permit request back in May. 
Um, and, you know, now we're coming up on your end and I appreciate that there's some complexities and, and nuances. I just want to reiterate, I, at least from our perspective, I don't think it, we felt like we made some last minute switch and I'm so sorry to hear that the board didn't receive our updated renderings. I thought we sent that maybe it got lost in the mix. We were just trying to be responsive to the ERB commentary. So it really forced us to really go back to the drawing board, hence the changes. Um, but at the end of the day, the big picture is still the big picture. We're just trying to modify and improve our backyard, which is a very awkward, fr frankly, smushed and elevated experience. And we're just trying to make it more cohesive and usable. Um, and really the enhancements at the end of the day are, are really mostly on the margin. We're just tweaking the patio that already exists and doing a few small changes, especially when we got rid of the pavilion. So I'm really confident that when we show that to everybody um, in the upcoming December meetings, hopefully the vision is a little bit more apparent to everyone. And I don't, I just want to make sure that point came across, so. Okay, well, I think our meeting will fall after the ERB meeting uh, during December. So you will have the benefit of hearing whatever it is they have to say, and then this board can deal with the result. That's certainly fine. And I would encourage the board, if you would like to conduct a site visit and come out and, and see exactly what Danny's describing, you're all welcome to come out, whether individually or we could coordinate a, a formal visit through, through staff. Happy, happy to facilitate that as well. Okay, thank you, Brad. All right, we will see thank you in you. December. See you next month, yes. Very good. Uh, I'll make a motion that uh, the Robin's application be continued to uh, next month. I'll second. Chairman Kenneth Cooper. Aye. Anthony Giardino. Aye. Harvey Bonaparte. Aye. Howard Dubs. Aye. Michael Mullen. Aye. Ready for the next one? Yes. Next one is Waterhouse. Waterhouse. Hi, everybody. Um, Tim Lenner, architect with my partner, Mike Lenner, and uh, the Waterhouses, Jennifer and Larry here tonight. And if you allow me to share my screen, I'll walk you through uh, what we're asking for tonight. So um, this property had been in front of you guys back in 2012, and certain variants were, were granted, including some rear yard setbacks and development coverage. Um, but in, you know, uh, that was 2012, and in 2015, some other work was done on the property that involved some patio work and a trellis. And unbeknownst to our clients, they you know they kind of slipped through the cracks as far as getting a permit. So we're here tonight to hopefully uh, legalize these structures and and offer the board uh, what we think would be a, a good solution to. Uh, get a positive feedback from you. Uh, the areas in question on this property are the shaded gray areas here. The pool is one of the things that received a variance back in 2012. This garage was always existing at that uh, rear yard setback of almost 30 feet. Um, uh, so these, are, these squares here, rectangles represent um, little flagstone uh, flush to the ground pads that are actually underneath Shays lounge, lounges. This is a freestanding uh, patio that's between and on center uh, with the garage and a trellis work that's over here on top of the stone patio. And this area back here is actually a little stone wall that I believe was part of the structure was there back in 2012. But the fact that a, a, a gas barbecue was added into it creates the need for a variance for that as well. So the four rear yard variants that we're looking for are to these flagstones, this stone wall, this patio on grade, and this patio on grade. I'm going to just show you uh, a little bit more about the property and how it relates to the neighbors. Uh, the aerial view here, you can see there's the pool, there's the chaises, patio, and you can see there's a tremendous amount of uh, landscape buffering between these structures and any adjacent properties. And in addition to that, the properties here to the east sit about 50 feet below the elevation 
of where these structures are. Here are like 458 elevation and down here are like 406. So it's, it's, it's pretty far down. Nobody, nobody uh, but the water houses can see these structures. Um, here's a kind of a different kind of a view to give you a kind of a rough idea of how everybody relates again. Here's the pool on center with this uh, trellis structure. There's one patio. The little chaise lounge is here and tucked away over here is where that um, barbecue area is. So um, going back to, um, you're so lucky to have a second development coverage in front of you tonight. I know how rare that is. And actually we were surprised that we're gonna be dealing with it. Uh, when, we, when we knew, uh, we saw these structures, we knew there was gonna be a rear yard variance ask. So I requested a new survey get done. And lo and behold, when we, did the actual development coverage calculations. And you can see we've broken down each individual piece throughout the property and we added it all up and it came out substantially higher than what was granted um, back in 2012. And I even had uh, the surveyor independently verify these numbers and we're both in agreement of what they are. So the combined, um, area of these structures that were built in 2015 adds up to about 878 square feet. Um, but we wound up with um, uh, a development coverage that put us pretty far beyond uh, what was permitted back then. You can see the numbers were here that they actually wound up at um, about 16,325 where the permitted is 13,988. And um, back in 2012, a variance was granted for 14,566. So um, what we're actually asking to do is to bring the property back into compliance with the development coverage that was granted in 2012 by removing a substantial portion of the driveway. Um, apparently what may have happened was they had, they had offered to remove sections of driveway in the previous site plan that we saw. And I just don't know that they removed enough or any of it. I, I wasn't around then, so I don't really know what happened and why it got through that far because it was still over. But you know, today we have to fix it. And this is the proposal. They have this turnaround area over here and it adds up to if we remove the entire amount, we're gaining back 1,760 square feet that could be turned into lawn area and also make a huge uh, reduction of impervious area on the property. So it'll be you know much better for, for the grounds and all. So um, uh, I'll switch one second here, just to give you an idea again of what everything actually looks like here. Uh, this is the approach from the, from the front of the driveway. And as you get into the backyard, uh, here's the edge of the pool coping here. This is one of the little patios. This is the patio adjacent to the garage, which actually has behind that door, there's a little powder room, which serves nicely to work as, as a changing room for the pool. So it kind of made sense in what they did. They just unfortunately didn't go about it in the, in the right way of doing it permitted first before, before uh, asking for these permissions. Uh, turned out to be a beautiful space. It, it really complements the architecture of the house and, and the garage and the yard certainly just beautiful place to, to be. It's very private. And like I said, nobody but the water houses can really see this. And that's what I have for you tonight. If you have any questions for me or the water houses, we're certainly willing to answer them. I'm just questioning, you remove the driveway, you still need a uh, development uh, coverage? Yes. So like I said, the, the addition of these spaces here in 2015 added about 878 square feet, which would have put it over what was permitted in 2012 anyway, but somehow another 800 square feet and change wasn't removed back then. So we have to remove a good amount of that to get back to this number here and ask for the 577 square foot variance, which is one square foot less than what you granted in uh, in 12. Just architecturally, is the 
width of the driveway uh, near a, what I think are the front steps where, where it becomes 20 feet, where most of the driveway is 14 feet or less. Is it necessary to be 20 feet at that? Well, I think that it leads, an, it, it, to me, I think it's nice that someone could park here and drop something off and other, someone else can still pass by to be able to get to this garage back here. So I think it serves a pretty valuable purpose in this case, considering you know we are, we're taking away a, a huge amount. I think that to leave this still provides a, a good thing. So someone doesn't have to always come up here to turn around and go back out. So I think it, I think it makes sense. Okay. So if I if I understand correctly, I think your previous development coverage, you, the board gave you fourteen five sixty six. Yes, I have that resolute. You guys, I think it was part of my packet that we submitted, but it's uh, it's right here. It's hard to tell from from the drawing, Tim, but there seem to be a lot of steps in the back leading off of patios and and seemingly not always with a, with a destination um maybe that's not the case but so there's a lot of ups and downs in this backyard the, a lot of these patios are at different levels and um you know these steps kind of wander up into a yard area here these steps kind of meander around this patio here, but I believe they were all pre-existing before the water house has ever bought this property. So this, this area here was just part of a, a landscape design or something. And clearly these steps help lead you down into the backyard pool area. Is there anyone uh, waiting on the line with their digital hand raised to be heard on this matter. Guys in the back? No? No, no hands are raised. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Make a motion we close the public hearing. I'll second. Henry Cooper. Aye. Anthony Giardina. Aye. Harvey Bonaparte. Aye. Alan Dubs. Aye. Michael Mullen. Aye. I'll make a motion that the warehouse application for sorted variances and development coverage variance for the following uh, be approved. Uh, there was a patio with a pergola, with a variance of 27 feet. There's a patio requiring a variance of 17 feet. Um, patio with a barbecue uh, requiring a variance of 43 feet. Uh, and flagstone pads uh, requiring variances of 32 feet. Uh, along with development coverage of 577 feet. Um, this is a property that has undergone um, a number of changes um, dating back uh, approximately 10 years. Um, we're here this evening to legalize these new improvements The ap applicant, his designer, have been thoughtful in their approach to uh, this design. They have made the accommodation of removing a uh, section of the driveway to limit the uh, development coverage uh, variance requirement. Um, 
There will be no undesirable change in the character of your neighborhood. The benefit cannot be sought through other means or methods. Uh, some of the variances are substantial, uh, though there is no impact on uh, neighbors. Uh, no neighbors uh, spoke in opposition to the application. Uh, there will be no adverse impact on the physical environment. Um, the alleged difficulty uh, in this regard is self-created. Um, all of the work is complete? Uh, except for removal of the driveway. Okay. And how long do you require to accomplish that? Larry, sometime this spring? That would be simple enough, yes. So you would start the work um, certainly within the next six months. Yes. And be finished easily within one year. That should work. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll second that. Chairman Kenneth Cooper. Aye. Anthony Giardino. Aye. Harvey Bonaparte. Aye. Howard Bell. Aye. Michael Mullen. Aye. And uh, we should ask for a final survey as well. As a, as a yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Thank you, board. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Next is uh, Schillifer. How did I do on your name? Did I butcher it pretty well? Schleifer. Yeah. Schleifer, okay. Yeah. I did butcher. Excuse me for that. It's okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you for having us. I'm Justin Schleifer, and I have my wife, Caitlin Schleifer, with me as well. Um, you know, we appeared in person tonight. This is a very personal matter to us. And also, as I think you know, we're here representing ourselves. Um, you know, I think possibly an unusual variant to be requested. And certainly, uh, in, in seeing and hearing what everyone else is going through tonight, uh, definitely something I think that the board probably doesn't have a lot of, uh, of precedent with. So um, we're here tonight to request uh, a variance to allow us to maintain four dogs. And forgive me if I'm getting emotional and uh, speaking about it. Um, it's uh, something where uh, I grew up in, in Westchester and in, in Briarcliff and Housening and spent a lot of my time in Newcastle. And um, always thought it would be great to raise a family here and um, fortunate enough to, to meet my wife and, and she was willing and amenable to, to move here with me. And uh, we did so about two years ago. And before doing so, we, we were, yeah, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, before doing so, we read through the, you know, the, uh, what we could find through the town rules and um, the the requirements and it seemed to us that there was not necessarily a specific requirement um around the the number of, of dogs that someone might have so um you know we thought we had done our diligence prior to to moving to the town and uh have since uh done so and uh we do have four dogs i think we didn't bring any visual aids with us but i know <laughs> you have um the packages in front of you and um, you know, we've laid out for you, um, I guess, the, the fact that although I think, uh, you know, even if our, our dogs were just pets, um, that it should still be something worthy of consideration for the board. But um, our dogs are, uh, at least three of them are also show dogs. Um, my wife is a professional dog groomer and, um, and is very active in the show community and uh, also, uh, the kennel clubs for the, the various breeds of dogs that we have. Um, we have a fully fenced in yard for the dogs. Um, there's no access outside the house that is not fully fenced in. Um, and uh, I believe that you've also received possibly a few letters of support from uh, neighbors or other um, you know, concerned citizens. So uh, I guess, you know, at this point, maybe just worth opening up the questions that you might have for us. So how, what is it, how did you come to become aware of this circumstance, this requirement, this limitation? Yeah, um, honestly, I, I can't say with certainty. Um, it's, I guess, my belief or understanding that there may have been a neighbor who submitted a complaint to the town in some capacity. 
Um, and uh, in so doing, the town contacted us and let us know that this was uh, potentially a requirement and um, something that would need to be addressed. Um, all of the dogs are registered with the town as well. Other than exceeding the three dog limit, uh, would there have been any reason for a neighbor to have brought this to the Not to our knowledge. And, and again, our, our property is fully fenced in for, for dogs. Um, none of our dogs have ever gotten out of the of our property or anything. Is, it, is there excessive barking? Not no. not at all. No, uh, and I believe even if you uh, review some of the letters that were submitted uh, from from our neighbor, at least um, give you a you know, he, play. he can indicate for you some of the information about at least his opinion yeah, that relates so. to barking or anything. Tom, is there anything that you are, are you involved at I'm all? I'm involved because it was a violation right. for having four dogs. But there has been no adverse impact to the neighborhood other than the one complaint and other neighbors have gone forward in their defense. Mm -hmm. And okay. the applicant has shown a secure surround for this and in conversation with the uh, dog warden, there is no concern. Okay. The complaining neighbor, did they bring up anything other than the, the number quantity, of dogs? Quantity only. There quantity no only. aggressive behavior. Okay. Are the dogs, um, do you, you keep them outside during the day and then <coughs> inside at night? They're, no, they, they go outside to use the bathroom and to play periodically, but they they're live indoors. Okay. okay. I've reviewed this very carefully. This is something that doesn't come before us very often, I'll tell you. We tried to find <coughs> precedent uh, previously and couldn't find yeah, it ourselves. Yeah, nowhere. Okay. You're not going to. Um, and I've reviewed the letters from your neighbors who I have no problem with it. And I, 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 I see that the, you have a very good uh, recommendation from your, your adjoining neighbors and everything. I would like to see you keep the dogs personally. I have a problem granting a variance to keep the dogs because variances run with the land. And when you move out, the next person could have four dogs that are monsters and we would have no control over. What I would like to say to do, if it's possible that our legal team will, will figure this out for us, if it's at all possible, is to not grant the variance but to grant a special use permit that would be under the purview and control of the zoning board as long as you're there uh, and which will expire when one of two things happen. You move out or you get rid of the dogs. Okay, if that's possible, I would like to see it going that way. I'm totally against the variance only because you guys are great, but the, the next guy may not be and we would be stuck with this. So, uh, I'm going to throw that, I'm going to throw that into the hands of our legal team and let them figure out how we're going to handle this. Yeah, uh, we'll have to look into to the details of that special use permit and everything. Um, right now, if, we don't have an answer. So we'll have to if, not, if not a special use permit per se, but something like that, yeah. where we would have control, it would have a sunset clause on it, mm -hmm. and we would not be bound by a, a, a typical actual variance that runs with the land, and the town will be stuck with this forever yeah. you don't want that to happen it, it may be possible to have it apply to the particular dogs at issue um or, you know that may be a possibility but again we'll have to look we'll have to research the issue whether that's going to be um a possibility because you, you're, you're correct mr jerry we can't apply it only to you know this particular property owner but there are ways to limit it um that we would have to look into in, in this situation so yeah, you know, because I, I, you know, quite frankly, from the recommendation of your neighbors, I, I think this, there would be zero problems with this particular instance. Mm -hmm. But like I say, if you guys can figure out a way to do it other than that, mm -hmm. I, I would be on board with it. I can't speak for my colleagues, but I will listen to what they have to say now. I yeah, know it says no kennel licenses, but in a lot of other jurisdictions, there's some sort of kennel license where you can apply and then you have all of your dog individual dog registrations vet records all submitted and and every dog in your family gets approved or denied based on all of that but generally kennel license are given to people over x amount of dogs doing there are such couple, things as what there we are have at least a couple in town yeah so aware. it would just yes. that way you can monitor what's going on and all that while we are able to maintain the current 
So have so. they? Have you looked into that account of license? Well, it's not. It's not in this town. It said it on the website. Well, we it wasn't that granted. As well, I believe the on the dog licensing page. Yeah, it's not in a residential district, right? Not in a residential district, right? So. So that sounds like something we may alternatively need a variance for. Uh, we do appreciate the distinction, though, between granting something that would last beyond our, yeah. you know, living in the in the home. We, we don't have anyone online who wishes to be heard on this matter. Yes. One hand was raised. Can you put them through? Hi, yes. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm um, Liz Fornari. I'm their direct neighbor. And I just wanted to say that I have no issue with them having their four pets. <clears throat> OK, thank you very much for appearing this evening and letting mm -hmm. us know. Mm -hmm. I do not want them to lose a, a pet, a current pet. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay. I guess I'll make a, another motion to continue, to continue this matter, uh, hold us over till um, we can reconvene in December and, and uh, have the benefit of uh, legal counsel. Okay. Thank you very we'll much. See you next month. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, second. We need a, I yeah. second that. Hi. Anthony Hi. Bonaparte. Hi. 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 Okay. Can you put up the screen that has the applicant? It's great looking at Harvey. But... <laughs> Is that possible? Okay. Okay, we're ready. Okay, uh, I'm Dan Contelmo with Daniel Contelmo Architects, and I'm here for uh, Katie Vaz, who's also present. Um, we prepared a landscape plan for their rear yard to have a uh, swimming pool and hot tub installed. And after it was installed, it was discovered i believe by the building inspector um that it was built too close to the side property line um so we received a letter of denial um saying that we would need to request a variance and it's uh where the setback is 35 feet the pool or I, we should just go by the coping, which is closer. The, the coping is 27.88 feet. Um, and this is based on a recent survey to determine what the pool was actually um, installed at. So we're asking for a variance for um, 7.12 feet for a side yard with a required setback of 35. I'm sorry, I didn't follow. What was the miscalculation? I, I understand what you're requesting now, but what? Uh, it was just that the pool was installed too close. Right. No, I get it. I'm talking about the measurement. Um, it was installed. So you came within seven feet. Right? 27 feet. It's installed 27.88 feet from the property line instead of 35. I see. And, and how did that mistake come about? I don't know. It was, I don't know. Does Mrs. Voss know? <laughs> you sought a I'm, permit for this, right? Yeah. You, correct. You had a permit, right? And, okay. So how was it missized uh, on the property? Well, so it was staked uh, prior to being installed, but it wasn't required to be surveyed um, as it was staked. The contractor staked it and installed it. Um, and then when we had the survey done, 
to close the permit, that's when it was discovered that the pool was too close to the property line. So was the, um, the pool contractor, was he working off a prior survey? To, to put, as you said, to stake out the location of the, the He pool. was working off of the plans that were approved. So somebody measured rugs, what you're telling us. Correctly. I mean, he acknowledges that he made a mistake in installing it in the wrong location. Now, yeah. we, have, we have these, we have had these come before us for a matter of eight inches or 10 inches, never seven feet. This is excessive. It's beyond the pair. So, luckily, you don't have a concrete pool. I'm assuming you, you have a one piece fiberglass pool, am I correct? That is That's correct. correct. When it came on a truck, they lifted it with a crane and put it in the hole. Am I telling is that correct? That is correct. So, what you need to tell your contractor is to move the hole, get the crane back, lift the pool up, and put it where it belongs because this is excessive and I, I'm totally against it. Is the uh, is the hot tub attached to the pool? Um, so, like, does, does the pool come with that hot tub attached, or does that have to be put in put in after and then attached? They're two separate pieces. Okay. So, I mean, that's the reason why zoning boards exist because, yeah, it's a self imposed hardship, but um i would ask what is the real issue with a pool that is too close to a property line I and mean, we, we the prop the uh, application two before us had a pool that was too close to a property line um since a pool is in the ground it's not even a visual impact um what is the what is the issue with it being too close to a property line? Well, you know, before it becomes the town's issue, it should be the contractor's issue, right? The contractor is the one who made the mistake. Um, I, I'm not I'm not suggesting that Mrs. Voss was even aware of what was occurring, right. and so you're saying. You know what why should you care right and we're asking the question why can't the contractor correct the error that he made and, and again we, we don't see i'm just speaking for myself I, i've never seen I, i've seen other errors but i've never seen an error as egregious as this in terms of missing the mark by this much. Another thing to consider is that there's ample property to have installed this pool without a very door. We have we have had requests where, where the properties are restricted in some manner where they couldn't put a pool in without a variance and usually it's inches not feet. We have had no problem granting those because we understand certain conditions require that the board have some latitude and, and protect the homeowner from the strict uh, um, uh, adherence to a law that, that, it, that they're not able to because of their, their property restrictions. In this particular case, there's plenty of property. It's just a, a, an error by, by a negligent contractor that wants to be bailed out by the zoning board. And I don't think it's fair for the zoning board, and I don't think it's fair for the rest of the residents in this town to have to bear that burden. Well, just to be fair for a minute, um, speaking about the abundance of property, um, I believe, Dan, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the positioning of the pool was in this location because of the need for a septic relocation area in the other corner of the yard that had been identified and we had to be a certain number of feet from that area. Um, so there was a specific reason why the pool was placed in this location in the yard. Um, and it wasn't intentionally placed 
you know, to be close to the property line, we were trying to place it so that it was within compliance with certain other regulations that we had to adhere to. But, but your, already, your original permit application showed the pool in a location that did not require a variance and, and was and was I understand. the proper distance from your septic, from your septic uh, uh, future field areas. So you do have this place to put it. It's not your fault. I feel for you. But you have a, you had a, a negligent contractor who should be held responsible for his negligence and not not put the burden of building him out not to his own board and not to the crown. That's, that's the I, I can't foresee any circumstance where the contractor is going to bear the burden of this and come and remove the pool and reinstall it. I, I just don't think that's a reasonable situation or occurrence. I, I I can't imagine that that will come to pass. I, I so Mrs. It's Voss, cost prohibitive well, at the end of the day. <laughs> well. Um, you know, there's something to be, to be said for people's reputation and their good name. And so um, I think the board is going to suggest that um, you, you go back to this contractor and tell them of what has transpired this evening and that you come back to us next month. And depending on the outcome, uh, you can explain you or your representative can explain to us the factors that the board should consider um, in your application. And we'll hold this matter over until next month. Um. Yeah, it's, it's more complicated, you know, and I know what you're saying that you want the, the contractor to take the burden, but um, it is a pretty complicated move. It's not just, a, you know, a bathtub that's being slid um, on the property because the hot tub is attached and obviously the piping, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's okay. almost doing it's the it's job. It's cost prohibitive at the end of the day. It's not. Okay, I, I would just say. Um, it's not feasible. You know, we're, we're, not, we're not just going to have this kind of conversation where you tell us it's complicated. You please come back to us next month and go into great detail to explain to us why it's complicated, what your contractor has said. If you want to bring your contractor and have him appear, that is up to you. But we need more of a rationale if we're to consider this. <clears throat> the board is held to um, certain standards in terms of um, granting variances, and that certainly holds true in this case. You know, and I, you know, you you see variances every month. Some of you for many many years, which adds up to a great number. And you know, in my career, I've, I've asked for many variances um, over thirty five years, and I've never had a board push back on seven feet. You know, you, you said you've had precedents where someone has said one foot, two foot, whatever it is, but a seven foot variance is, that's a really small amount to ask for. And, and I'm sure you grant variances every month that are greater than that. So I'm, I'm really shocked that you would, you would take the stance that a seven foot variance on a swimming pool is considered too great. Um, well to grant and maybe let me just ask the question in a in a different um manner you know with with due respect to the board if we had come to the board with the intention of placing the pool and requested a seven foot variance at the beginning of the permit process for some reason or another um and we had rationalized that with the board at that time you know, would there be a different approach versus the fact that the contractor obviously made a mistake in placing the pool? I, I'm just, I'm curious whether it's because there was a mistake in the process or if it's the true nature of the variance. 
And it seems to me like those items are being conflated. Okay. The board has to consider five factors in granting any variance. And so um, we need to move on this evening. Um, we would ask that you come back next month and have your architect um, explain those five factors to us and why we should consider them um, in the event you're not able to get your contractor to make right on his mistake. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your time. Um, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, do we have someone on the line who wants to be heard? You're not. You're not here on this. No. No hands. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll see you next month. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Rodriguez, 19 Heath Cold Drive. Well, good evening. <clears throat> My name is Michael Serignano. I represent Maria and Michael Rodriguez, who live at 19 Heathcote Drive with their children. Uh, their house sits on just over one acre or 43,990 square feet in an R1A zoning district. Uh, I believe we have somebody here from uh, Hudson Engineering with us, the project engineer. Uh, is it Michael, Michael, Michael Stein? Michael Stein with Hudson. How are thank, you? Thank you, Michael. Uh, so we appear before the board uh, tonight to request one variance, a single variance, for our proposed development property. Allow Michael and, and Maria to construct an in-ground new pool and patio for their family. Uh, as, if we could put the uh, site plan up on the screen, either Michael or Jackie. Okay, great. So as you can see, the, the pool is designed to be direct, set directly behind uh, their house in the backyard uh, and will not extend either north or south, right or left, beyond the foundation lines of the house. Uh, and no setback variances are needed. We're well within um, our, our setback. So again, we just need a single variance because of the development coverage. Our, our building coverage is uh, is well within limits. We're 25% below the maximum allowed for building coverage. So this is a, a, a unique situation where it's strictly the development coverage. Uh, the proposed pool and patio will increase uh, our development coverage by 2,274 square feet. Uh, the, the proposed development coverage when we're done will be 11,559 square feet when 8,785 square feet is the standard. Um, but currently the existing conditions at the house when Michael and Maria bought it uh, already exceed the maximum by 497 square feet, current development coverage being 9,282. Uh, we're proposing an additional 1,777 square feet. Uh, I'm going to uh, ask Michael to just point out the, the new impervious surfaces that are triggering this uh, development coverage variant. Um, if I could share my screen, I can bring up, uh, we did a breakdown of where the impervious coverages are. So the original uh, presenter needs to stop presenting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you seeing? Yes. yes. Okay. So on the left side, uh, we have a breakdown of all the existing impervious areas. Our total square footage is 9,282 square feet. Um, that breaks down. Um, and th th that breaks down into 
4,319 square feet for the driveway and uh, parking area and walkways, uh, 1,062 feet for the existing rear patio terraces or patio terrace, um, and 276 feet uh, for the existing, whether it's walls or, or other um, uh, amenities that, that may be there. Uh, but it really comes down to the walls. And the proposed condition on the right side, there's the additional 496 square feet, which includes the, this walkway here, uh, the walkway over on this side, and these, and this, these stone walkways here. Uh, we have 960 square feet, which is the, the amount covered with the new terrace that extends around here. Uh, 936, 938 square feet for the footprint of the pool. And then there's 152 square feet, um, uh, additional walls and also with the, I oh know the 938 includes the, um, the pool equipment as well. Uh, with the addition of the proposed bar, the grill and the, um, those two, that, those will add up to uh, additional 157 square feet uh, for the, uh, all other structures. And so again, in total, we have a, an increase of 2,277 square feet uh, on the site of impervious area. Okay, thank you, Michael. You're welcome. Uh, so we looked at the driveway, if anything could be eliminated there, but the house sits well above the street level um, and the driveway is a, a bit of an incline. So uh, there's, there's nothing there that we could uh, reduce. Uh, none of the immediate neighbors on, on three sides um, uh, have, have uh, responded to the public notice. Uh, one, uh, but one, uh, 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 Randy um, Hutchins, uh, who's at 9 Stockbridge Road, that's the corner of Heathcote and Stockbridge, uh, wrote a note or a letter to uh, an email to the board writing to express her support for the Rodriguez pool project proposal. Um, the, uh, uh, just going quickly through the five standards, uh, there will be no undesirable change producing the character of the neighborhood or detriment to nearby properties. Your, your board is I'm sure familiar with, with the large open space area behind the Rodriguez and the properties uh, to the north and south because um, our next door neighbor, uh, I think about a year ago, uh, had come in for a variance. So there's, there's, there's nobody to the immediate rear of the pool in the house that's going to be impacted. Uh, the benefit uh, sought by this young family to have a pool for the kids uh, not be achieved by any other method other than the variance because of the, the development coverage standards in, in Newcastle. The amount of the variance is, is numerically large. I, I have to concede that. Um, but the pool is a ground level structure and it, 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 it not only adheres to all setbacks, but it exceeds all setbacks. And again, it will not have any impact on neighbors. Uh, uh, as, as you board members know from experience, some, sometimes a small variance can have a, a tremendous negative impact, while a large variance can have little or no impact. And I, I'd say that we're in the latter category here. Uh, the fourth uh, factor uh, is not going to have any adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions. In fact, uh, Michael, uh, Michael and his team at Hudson have developed a stormwater management plan. Uh, that is, is going to be a huge improvement uh, to capture stormwater. I think he's got eight uh, Cultec recharger chambers designed. So this is the net result is going to be from a stormwater point of view, there's going to be a great improvement and better control of stormwater at the site uh, by reason of the installation of the pool and the related stormwater improvements. And lastly, the alleged difficulty, uh, I don't believe is self-created as the house and the pre-existing non-conforming as to development coverage. So for all those reasons uh, and, and the absence of, of any neighbor uh, objection, and frankly, there'd be no impact, adverse impact on neighbors, we would ask that you grant the variance so that the Rodriguez's can have their pool. 
Could I ask about the the driveway itself? I know you spoke about it. Right. The the way that it's configured down by Heathcote with the rather large step off area and then a a jog and and then a um, steps two sets of steps to get up to what I presume is the front door. That's correct. I, I, um, and I recognize that that was there, I guess, when you, I mean, you know, when the home was purchased and it's not something that you'd be anxious to, to change, but given the, given the overage and development coverage, it just, it seems, I don't know, wasteful in terms of the, the area that it provides, um, what does it accomplish in terms of the size of that first platform that takes you then to the steps to the right? Okay, what as I that... say, yeah, and if Maria and Michael are uh, tuned in, you can, yep, I can bring it up. You can chime in. But the, as I said, this that driveway is fairly steep, uh, and and in that area that you're referring to uh, is really important because uh, uh, you know visitors uh, will will. We'll pull into that area and enter the front door, walk up the steps to the front door. Uh, Michael and Maria, are you on? Yes, it's not displayed. Yes, the plan is up. Yes, sure. Uh, so uh, that's why uh, that's a very important uh, uh, feature. Um, right. I mean, I mean, I'm not qualified to redesign it and but but as I look at it, the the area that I guess is at at ground level, you know, it's a rather large area before you get to the steps. Then then you could argue you, you obviously need the steps to get to the next elevation, and the and the walkways are what they should be. But um, yeah. Well, and we need a turning ability too, because the cars will pull in there. They'll visit, enter the, through the front door. When they come out of the front door, they they're able to back uh, up the driveway a little bit and then pull forward back out to Heathcote Drive. And then, just uh, if I could ask about the uh, pool equipment room, so. That seems to be rather large. What is? Uh, I'm, I'm not following the room. I, there's a proposed pool equipment uh, patio area. Oh, it's a patio area? I'm yes. sorry. Right. Patio yes. area where pumps and filters will be uh, installed. <clears throat> and is that the minimum size that's required for that equipment? It's, it's about 60 square feet. So they were, they were keeping it as small as they could. Okay. And we also have the, right in that area is the same uh, is where the gas meter is, as well as other uh, um, equipment. So that's that's why it's trying to place it in that area. Right. Okay. Yeah, that, that area was laid out by the pool company, I believe, Shoreline Pool. Is yes. It? Right. Never to be trusted. <laughs> And I, I don't know if this, this view will give some um, understanding of the area. So that's a, basically a bird's eye view looking up of the driveway coming up, the courtyard in front of the garage. And so all the way to the right of the house is where the pool equipment would be going. Can you open that view a little bit, Michael, expand it and show yep. them what's behind or the fact that nothing's behind it? All right. So I would do the street view, but the street view is too out of date compared to the age. Can you give them a sense of the change in elevation from street to the? Uh, from the street, you're approximately elevation 258. At the garage, you're up at 369, so approximately 11 foot difference. So this driveway is probably pushes the towards the limit of, a, of the change 
a degrade, right? Allowable grade. Do we have um, you don't have a, a CAD drawing open where I can take measurements of distance, but right. um, it, it, but it is on the steeper end. Right, but this shows you, this photo shows you that we're gonna locate the pool pretty much right where, right at the end of that existing patio area. Right. Do we have anyone online who wants to be heard on this matter? No. No. Well, I think if we needed setback variances or there were if there were concerns from neighbors, I could understand that'd be problematic. But here it's, uh, I believe, the, the tree falling in the forest and nobody's there to hear it. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Chairman Kenneth Cooper. Aye. Anthony Giardino. Aye. Harvey Bonaparte. Aye. Howard Doug. Aye. Michael. Aye. I'd like to make a motion. I can make a motion. Okay. Um, I move that um, we grant a variance to Michael and Maria Rodriguez. Um, a, a, a development coverage variance of 2,774 square feet um, for the following reasons. Um, well, first of all, they've, uh, they've been thoughtful in um, uh, improving the drainage in the property, improving the stormwater uh, maintenance. Uh, the, uh, the house was already a pre-existing non-conforming uh, development coverage uh, when they bought the house. Uh, and the, there are no neighbors in opposition to this. Uh, the granting of the variance will not create an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. Um, the benefits sought by applicants cannot be achieved by any other feasible method because uh, if we if we reduce the size of the driveway, it would probably it would make it more difficult uh, given the fact that the driveway is 11 feet elevated from the street. Um, the area variance is substantial, um, but it seems to be no other feasible way to construct this, they've been thoughtful in the size of the pool equipment, et cetera. Uh, will not have an adverse effect or on the impact of the physical environment uh, and the conditions of the neighborhood. There's no one that lives behind them. Uh, and there are no neighbors uh, who are present who are written in opposition to the variance. Um, Tom, what do we need for this? We need a foundation survey and a final survey. Okay, so we'll need a foundation survey and a final survey. And to start, Six months or when, when six months to start in a year to finish. I'll second that. Cameron Kenneth Cooper. I, I, I'm sorry, just um, we use the, my, Michael used the correct um, number, right? Because I, I think the application has one number he used, yeah. Tom's number, right? It's a 274. Two seven, two seven, 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 four. Four. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's not the, it's not the two <laughs> I think I corrected. Oh, okay. Okay. You don't look at corrections. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, where were we? Oh, good. Wait, I second. Second. Okay. <laughs> Kenneth Cooper. Aye. Anthony Giardina. Aye. Harvey Bonaparte. Aye. Howard Doug. Aye. Michael Mullen. Aye. Thank you. Happy variants. Thank you. Thank you very much. Given the, the earlier matter, we'll be sure that the pool goes in the right place. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me just give you a little background on that. You're going to do a gunite pool, I assume. Yes. Yeah. And luckily for you, you're putting the pool right behind the house and it's going to not extend beyond the house structure because when they don't do that, I normally require a uh, survey before the gunite is shot because we have had problems where they shoot the gunite and they're off and they go, oops, well, we can't move it, it's gunite. So you'll luck out on that. You don't have to do a gunite survey, but you do okay. need you do need to give us an as bill. Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Yeah, happy holidays. You too. Walsh 87 Devon Road. Good evening. It's Bill Spade, the architect. Uh here representing the Walshes. Uh James Walsh is, is on the uh, Zoom uh, meeting as well, 
and uh, he is uh, he and his wife Kristen are the owners of the the property. A new oh, very new hard, very hard to be a Packer fan. Hey, this season. They're, they're not dead yet. I think is what Aaron <laughs> Rodgers said. So they're on life support if they're not dead. <laughs> yeah, I think he's in an alternate universe. But uh, yes, uh, we'll still cheer him on. Um, thank you. So nice to be here. Good to see you all. Uh, we're here to uh, seek uh, technically three variances for alteration and addition to the home. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and show the um, uh, the cover sheet and then the site plan and describe the what we're seeking. Um, first, an aerial view of the of the property. Uh, we're on DeVoe Road on the south side of DeVoe Road. Uh, the the, the uh, aerial view is flipped around, north is to the bottom, uh, just to orient it to the front of the house. Uh, as you can see in the aerial, and then I'll show you on the on the, the enlargement of the site plan, the house, which was constructed in 1960, was built into the front right corner of the property, and so uh, is pre-existing, uh, non-conforming to both the front yard setback and the right side setback. Uh, and, and that's pertinent because uh, we we're, we we're proposing to do work both on the front and on the right side that then engender uh, the variances that we're requesting. So the, the two principal uh, pieces of the alteration we're, in addition we're proposing on the front of the house, and I'll enlarge this plan a little more, uh, we're seeking to uh, widen the existing front uh, stoop of the house uh, presently, it's a uh, just an exposed landing with steps down to the front. Uh, and I'll show you, I hope will be a photo of the front of the house, which uh, do you see the photograph here? Yes, we do. Yeah, great. So you see the existing front steps and landing in front of the front door uh, and a somewhat odd projection of the second floor out over that. Uh, what we're seeking to do is widen the uh, front porch to equal the width of that second floor, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, overhang as it were, and uh, give that a nice uh, roof and cover to kind of give it a more pleasant, uh, elegant uh, solution for uh, the front and and also cover the the landing. Uh, so that uh, alteration, I'll flip back to the uh, plan. Uh, you see in the light lines there, the existing landing in the same front plane as the existing landing, widening it uh, to equal that, that overhang above and then putting a roof over the top. Uh, we may need to replace the front steps, uh, but we would do that in the same dimensions that they presently are, uh, partly because of the uh, septic tank is, is exactly, you know, in the realm of where where uh, we can't go any further than than what is already there, uh, so that in the enlargement of the front porch requires a um, nine roughly nine foot variance. And we're going to ask for nine point three feet just, just to be sure we we we're, we're, you know don't need to come back to you uh, for the variance to the beginning of the steps, and then uh, we need about a uh, 6.3 foot variance to the face of the front porch. And again, those are uh, the existing dimensions. And so we're, we're, we're not increasing the non-conformance just uh, being in line with it. Uh, the second uh, part of the project is to do additions on the back of the house. Uh, and as you can see in the site plan, uh, as the right side of the house is into the right side setback, the addition at the Rear uh, also extends into the side yard setback. So we need uh, an approximately, uh, we have a 35 foot requirement. Uh, we need about a, um, I'm not doing my math, I have to tell my uh, 6.3 foot variance uh, for that um, side yard uh, encroachment. Uh, the addition back here is to, the, on the right side of the house, on the first floor is the living room. We wanna enlarge the living room there. And, and kind of more importantly, on the second floor, it's the, ma the master primary bedroom and very, two very small closets that are at the rear of the uh, primary bedroom. And we want to enlarge those to create 
larger closets. And so that six foot, six and a half foot, as it's labeled there, enlargement at the rear is to add very important functions uh, onto the house. And so uh, that, uh, that, that enlargement and that encroachment we think is critical. Um, that's really the, uh, you know, the, the, the summary of what we are seeking. Uh, the plans otherwise comply with both building coverage and development coverage. Uh, so we're, we're good on those counts. And um, we uh, also, I wanted to point out, uh, I don't believe there are any neighbors here uh, to speak to this, they, they they obviously did get notified. The neighbor to the left, uh, we know well, and they were well aware of the plans and had no objection to uh, what was being proposed. Uh, the neighbor, the property to the right, uh, go back to the photograph I showed, you can see that there's a substantial amount of mature trees and vegetation along that right side, screening uh, that property. And then the home that's on that lot, it's actually the rear yard uh, of that uh, property. And just to complete this uh, part of the uh, uh, you know information, you can see that home here on the aerial uh, of substantial amount of property uh, between the rear of that home and this uh, property line. And again, with a, a good stand of mature vegetation there. So uh, uh, doesn't seem to have any impact on uh, on that property, and um, you know. So that's the conclusion of our presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, certainly uh, ready to answer them. Is there anyone on, online who wants to be heard on this matter? Okay, thank you. I make a motion to close public hearing. Second. Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion. Um, I move that the Walsh application for variances for the construction of front porch, front stairs, and a rear addition for the expansion of the living room and master bath. Um, be approved the front porch variance. Um, Bill, I don't know. You were using some fuzzy math there. Uh, <laughs> we wanted to get a little larger than the than the dimension we're showing, just to be sure we didn't miss. So nine nine point three feet is the requested variance uh, for the front. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna make uh, the front porch six point five, uh, the front stairs nine point five, and the rear seven feet. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, this will, uh, these changes will certainly um, uh, make for uh, a more usable uh, property home on the part of the homeowner. Uh, there um, will be no undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. The benefit cannot be sought through other means. The requested variances are, are not substantial. There will be no adverse impact on the physical environment. And these um, changes uh, were not self-created. Um, you will have six months to start, one year to complete, and we will need a foundation survey prior to framing. Uh, no neighbors uh, to speak in opposition. For these Second. reasons, I think we should approve. Chairman Kenneth Cooper. Aye. Anthony Giardino. Aye. Harvey Bonaparte. Aye. Aye. Michael Nolan. Aye. Thank you. Have your variance, Bill. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Have, have a happy holiday. You too. Bye bye. Abad, 350 Bedford Road. People would ordinarily pay a lot to have witnessed everything that they saw here this evening. It's a learning experience, yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, good evening, Chairman uh, and members. Uh, my name is Jorge Abad. I am uh, both a homeowner and an architect uh, for the proposed uh, 
addition to, to our home. Uh, my wife is here, Jennifer Phillips. Uh, um, and um, uh, our home at 350 Bedford Road. And uh, we are here uh, because we'd like to request uh, uh, a variance uh, or variances um, on the front yard, uh, a 23 foot variance for the uh, for a two story addition and a 21 foot variance for a covered porch, and also uh, a height variance uh, to, to uh, renovate uh, the third story yeah. attic space in the home. Um, so, so the home at 350 Bedford is, uh, as you may know, a, a historic uh, uh, home. It's a, it's a Newcastle landmark uh, registered with the historic uh, uh, society in, uh, in, in uh, Newcastle. Um, so we, we've already uh, submitted our plans, uh, first and foremost, to the Landmark Advisory Committee, and they, they support the uh, our, our, um, our proposed addition. Um, we've also gone through the architectural review board and they've, uh, they've also uh, approved our, our proposed addition. And, um, and and what we're looking to do is just minimally expand on the, the rear to the residence. Um, and, and, you know, the residence was built in the 1760s. Um, uh, it's, you know, it way before <laughs> Uh, the zone ordinance was in place, uh, so most of the house is well within the setback, the front yard setback. Um, the home also was built uh, with a, with a walk up attic, uh, which was uh, renovated uh, or, or used, you know, with the uh, when it was built um, and renovated subsequently uh, a few times or partially renovated. Um, so we're we're looking to to use that space and renovate it as well. Um, and uh, the, the character of the addition is, is, is minimal. It's, it's really to sort of complement the home, um, and also to, to uh, as with the previous application, to support functions in the house, uh, expand the kitchen a bit, um, expand our, our, our master suite a bit, um, and then uh, renovation of the third floor floor space, uh, just to add some family uh, uh, room space and uh and an office for myself um so that's uh that's pretty much it in a nutshell and uh leave it open to to your questions i have a question absolutely um you said you said a 23 foot variance for the for the two-story addition my yes. numbers my numbers call for 31 foot you're coming within 20 29 feet of the uh Mr. Giordino, I believe I may have made an error. No, I don't think so. Uh, well, there if you is. Did, I didn't catch it. Well, no, there, there is. Um, so, so in, there is a, uh, a difference between um, when I originally, I think, I think there's there was a sub subsequent survey that came in uh, that we that we submitted it with. Uh, I think originally when we made a, a request there was a, a so you have revised survey that shows the difference in the numbers it, it, there was a difference in the numbers but i did that was what i submitted with my application actually okay. the revised numbers but the denial letter was based on the original the, 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 exactly the denial letter is based on my building permit application which uh which was based on a on a very old survey ah, okay. and we okay. we subsequently surveyed the property actually we did it um a couple months back um just in preparation for for the zoning. Um, so you need less of a variance than we thought. I need less of a variance. It turns out I need less of a variance. <laughs> yes. So my apologies so for that. What, what was that number again for the for the front? Uh, so the front. The two story uh, addition. The, to the two story addition, the variance is twenty three feet. Twenty three feet. Yes, sir. Oh, that's good. And uh, and then to the covered porch, the variance is twenty one feet. Better yet, because I had 27. 21 feet. Good. Okay. And my apologies. I should have. I should have included that that difference in, in the that change in, in my uh, in my letter. But but it was in the application. I'm glad we had to serve it again. <laughs> yes. And the third story or is is pre existing. Is it is it finished up there? It's pre existing. It was partially renovated uh, by a previous homeowner. Um, and, and we understand that she had received the CO 
uh, for her partial renovation way in, mm -hmm. back in the 1970s. Oh, okay. Yeah, we actually right. know know the previous yeah. owner. Uh, that is correct. Yes. So we're all comfortable with that. It's not a problem. Yeah. Is there anyone online who wants to be heard on the matter? Any other questions? No. I move to close the public hearing. Second that. Aye. Harvey, are you with us? Yes, I am. I'll, I'll put the video back in. Michael Nolan. Aye. Would you like to make a motion? Uh, I'll take it. Uh, the application of Jorge Abad and uh, Jennifer Phillips um, seeking a um, two. Um, Two front yard variances and a uh, third floor alteration. Uh, I move that we grant the variance. Um, for the front yard, it would be 23 feet. Uh, and for the covered porch, it would be 21 feet. And uh, a variance uh, to um, finish the third floor of the existing property, existing house. Um, the granting of the variance will create no undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. There is no other feasible method than the variance to achieve the benefit to the uh, applicant. The variance, um, I don't consider them substantial. This is a uh, historic home um, and it's pre-existing, probably non-conforming pre-existing from the 1700s. And uh, Granting the variance will be no adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. And um, I don't believe this is uh, self-created. Uh, so for those reasons, I move that we grant the variance. Six months to start, one year to finish. Okay. And we will need survey. a uh, survey. Okay. Sir, completion survey. That's failed. Okay. That's failed. Absolutely. I'll second that. Chairman Kenneth Cooper. Aye. Anthony Giardina. Aye. Harvey Bonaparte. Aye. Howard Dubs. Aye. Michael Nolan. Aye. Thank you. Happy variants. Thank you. Thank Welcome. you all. Troy. Happy holidays. Thank, Thank you. you. Make a motion we adopt the meeting minutes for the uh, October 26th meeting. Second that. Chairman Kenneth Cooper. Aye. Anthony Giardina. Aye. Harvey Bonaparte. Aye. Howard Dutt. Aye. Michael Nolan. Aye. Okay, we're off. There was one other matter. Oh. Um, we're going to do this on, or? Yeah, we could do it on. Oh, online. okay. Yeah, that's fine. We, there, you received um, a lead agency notice from the town board regarding the amendment to the zoning code. If the board wants to make any comments, we should just, uh, we should probably, we, you know, we would have to discuss those on the record and put together written comments of any board members. I would suggest for next month, the board review it over the, the period, notify our office. Um, if you want to put in any written comments, we can discuss them at the December meeting and you can approve them and we could have a draft of them. If anybody has any comments, if not, this you're not involves, required to comment. Go ahead. This involves one address. Yes. The right aid property. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Why is that not spot zoning? Excuse me? Why is it not considered <laughs> spot zoning? It's only one address. They're looking for a, a zoning change. No, I understand that. I'm not, I mean, I'm not against it or for it or anything. It's just that I am going to be the person if you're going to take one address and change the zoning. It's spot zoning. It's not allowed. There are instances where you're allowed to do it in one location. You know, it depends on the, the circumstances. Convenient. So depends on circumstances. Okay. Just ask. And does does the will the code spell out what what a hardship translates into, or will it be similar to if if the board were to um, grant variance, assuming that this all goes through, right. and we were to grant a variance saying that it's not required that there that the applicant comply? I think it would be under the same standards as you know mm -hmm. you look under under the five five factors right and you know if there are certain setback requirements relating to that I, I i haven't looked through the um the exact change to the zoning i think it's more allowing certain 
number of units or you know it's uh, number of units uh, decrease in parking right do they have a tenant or tenants or this is this is all speculation right the de i'm sure the developer has proposed it i think and I see. you know and we have a developer that's proposed it so right. they're looking to you know improve the property that way right okay just putting it in the board's minds you know that you have it so yeah <clears throat> okay we can go off thank you